Crackheads, it's Tina Smash coming at you live tonight. We are in Charlotte at Amos South End. we got a big show tonight, nothing more, and then Sleepwave. And we've got Spencer Chamberlain here at Sleepwave. How are yeah, you doing, up? man? Good, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. You awesome. look good, you look good, you look happy, you look like you're ready. Yeah, I'm stoked. I mean, it's on, the, on tour for a while, and this is actually uh, close to where I grew up, so... Oh, you're from Carolina? Yeah, I'm from North Carolina. I didn't know that. Now, where, yeah. where do you reside now? I was I live in Florida. Okay. We, you know, I've been ever since under oath. I've been in Florida right, so okay. for eleven plus years. Now, is Stephen from North Carolina. Stephen's as well? from Florida. Oh, okay. So you guys so, met up in Florida. Yeah, we met in Florida. So yeah, I'm just stoked. My dad's here tonight. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Is it weird to have your like? Your he's watched me play in a metal band all over the world, so it's fine. Yeah. He's, he's used to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go back to um, for those of you who don't know, uh, you used to be in Under Oath, yep. and um, you know that obviously went away, and now here you are. Now it's you and Steven Correct. who are like BFs, right? Right. And so. Who else plays in the band? You just have people just travel um, with you and tour yeah, with you? Yeah, basically, like, when I started writing this, I would just write it. Uh, Steven's, like, my, my boy from back home. Like, when I come from, from tours, who I'd hang out with. And I'd always just, we'd always just play music, you know, just yeah. for fun. Like, it was just always for fun. And we started taking it more seriously. And I think the only conversation we ever had about it was, let's keep it you and I. Let's not. Obviously, we're onto something. Like, labels were already biting at us, managers, and, like, it, we had some we had some interest just from the demos that we were making so and I really liked I had this really strict vision of where I wanted to go and where I didn't want to go and the more people you know like we had some people try out for the live band and they were like oh well maybe I should write this so I could write my own bass part so I could do and it just it's kind of the like, worst thing to do yeah. when you're trying out for a band <laughs> yeah so we just did the whole damn thing ourselves and we had a session drummer come in and play on the record but most of the drums we programmed beforehand yeah and like this is what we want you to play basically and then you know you can you, learn you, it can, you can do your own thing around but this is the beat you know this is the idea for the most part and uh so yeah we just kept it me and him and um uh, it's really working out great, and our, like, some of my best friends are in the live band, and they're totally cool with being in a live band, not like part of the writing and yeah. you know the interviews and all that kind of stuff. It's they're, just, they're just like behind the scenes kind of thing. Yeah, yeah they're just like like you know Mars Volta was two guys, but like sixteen on stage, yeah, right, right. you know, and uh, you know Nine Inch Nails is one or you know True well, Resonant, yeah. yeah, or True Resonant is Ross, however yeah. you want to put it. And the rap, it's five guys on six guys on stage yeah. sometimes. It probably makes it a lot simpler. Um, and, you know. As far as the drama goes, too. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people don't understand that bands go through a well, lot of drama. It's like putting chicks in a dorm room together. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, put it this way. Under Earth ended because three guys didn't want to do it anymore. You know? And, yeah. and we could have easily kept going with the... Our momentum was still high, and we were about to write another record, and it just seemed like... So three people can make a call in your life that says you're you're not going to do this anymore. Like someone telling you, like yeah. you're not you're no longer in radio. Yeah, well, it's happened. You, you, you have, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you pick but up you the pieces. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, or totally. Someone's like, like someone's in control. Something that you love. Like say if you're a lawyer and someone goes, our firm's closing. You're not allowed to open a new firm. You're done. Go think. Do, go do something, go do else. something else. And yeah. I was just like, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Like, so now you're you in control. Yeah. You can't tell me what I can and cannot do. Yeah. So it's not that I'm a a Nazi about the control it's just I you know I, I'm going to do all the work myself, but I'm going to control when and when I don't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, you know? exactly. I think it seems pretty normal. Yeah, I think that's pretty normal. <laughs> so I had read somewhere that um, this is the happiest that you've ever been, even though when you started, you had like, what, less than 50 cents in your bank yeah. account? <laughs> oh, for a long time. I was homeless. I went through... Uh, like the one of the seven steps of grieving or whatever. That's what I always kind of like refer to it as like. Like you get yeah, angry, you get yeah, sad. You yeah, get I was like well, I had the anger of under oath breaking up, the sadness, the depression, the you know regret of the things I didn't get get to do, and um, and then I came back around to uh, you know picking myself back up, picking the pieces up, believing in myself again, and putting this thing out there and all those emotions are on this record which, well, makes, it, my next question, which yeah. makes it really special to me it's the most proud of anything i've ever done so now it, the record comes out september 16th and it's broken compass yes is that, okay yeah, yeah. so it, it pretty much is going to be an album of of you picking yourself up and yeah it's, it's, today. A, it's a story of you know the last year two years of my life basically you know and uh, i think a lot of people can relate to those emotions because i feel like we all go through things rough times in our lives and um it's all on there it's pretty brutally honest 
Do you appreciate the album more with this one because you had to start from scratch and and, um, and literally with 50 cents in your pocket get to it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was good. Just like I wish every band could go through what I went through because even though Under Oath was very humble and we, uh, you know, we really didn't take things for granted too much, there's still certain things you take for granted. And... Um, I, I really think I, I got looked to look back on my life and really kind of learned how to live again and kind of appreciate things a little bit more. Not that I, I didn't really take anything for granted. I never was a, a big spender with my money or anything. Like I was really modest and lived well below my means. Both of our phones are going. I know. Off. Sorry. And uh, <laughs> I think it's them trying to contact us. <laughs> it's his management I, trying to contact yeah. us so we could do the interview. Yeah, but little did they know. <laughs> um, I lived well below my means and like you know tried to be really modest and respectful, but I, it's there's still things that you just like you wish you would have done better. I think that's anyone in their lives. I was gonna say that's part of growing up. And, I, and you know I think this was perfect for me to 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 do all that before this took off. Yeah. You well, know, and even down to this tour that we're on, that's small. You know, and there's no one knows who we are really. Some places know the single, some places don't. Some shows are big, some shows are empty. You know, and it's like it's good for the guys that are touring with me to see this because, yeah. you know, the first tour we did was sold out. You know, and that was because we were out with Taking Back Sunday and the U's. But it's good to be on a tour where things aren't easy and you don't make any money and you're struggling because it makes the band a stronger unit. I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Do you like it when, um, like the website for this show, when I went there to get directions, it um, had you know, sleep wave with the former lead singer of Under Earth. Do you like I mean, when they do that? I feel or, like or do you want to separate yourself from from that? I feel like, um, sorry, we started like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Your text, yeah, your texts are slow. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't mind at all. I think it's, it, you know, I think it's kind of cool that kids can learn that that's what I'm up to. Because I know there's a lot of Under Earth fans that have no idea that I'm doing this still to this yeah. day. And, it, you know, I don't, I don't think it's something to be ashamed of. I'm very proud of my past and all the hard work I put into it. And um, it's it's nice to be able to let people know, like, hey, you know, I'm doing this now. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying you have to like it. I'm not, right. I'm not tricking you. Right. I'm not saying you have to buy this. <laughs> it's just like under oath. Like I've never said in one interview yeah. it sounds anything like it. But it is nice for, you know, I, you know, like one of my favorite bands, like if, um, I don't know, if like, Nine Inch Nails broke up, I would like to know, and well, they did, and he did the, the How to Destroy Angels, like, it was nice to know that, because yeah. then I had somewhere to, to well, check out. It's kind of crazy how many artists have side projects yeah. anyway, it's just, it's it's kind of like your therapy and, and what you love to do, so when you're on a break, why, you know, a lot yeah. of other bands do that, and musicians do that, so. Hell yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. Yeah, is, um... Is the new album, obviously, since we haven't heard it, it, does the first single set the precedence of what the album sounds like, or is it, is it harder, um, is it a mix? I think it goes all, it kind of goes all over the place without sounding like a different band. I thought that song was going to be a B-side, so oh, really? if that means anything, yeah. I mean, I'm very proud of all the songs, but to me, that was the one that I was like, uh, I'll make it a B-side, it's not, not a big deal. So explain to me how... Um, they pick the singles then like do, do you have any say when do they come to you and say yeah what yeah, do you think they do they do but also if you trust your team like you know i got to actually meet everyone there was to meet in labels and managers and all that so i would be in a team that i could trust because under oath was in a very untrusting and no one trusted anyone that worked for each other and vice versa we were yeah. always fighting over every little tiny thing and i i you know i spent a year finding the right people to work with and you know i really trust the guys at epitaph like when they're like look this is yeah. it, they say at the end of every conversation every phone call like look it's your band man it's like you have the final say but you know i'm not the record label i'm not the radio i'm not brett i'm not the radio guy i, I love not, brett like, too yeah, yeah, he's an him. awesome and, guy and i you know I'm the songwriter, so if you think this is a better first single for some reason that yeah. this will I open think they the have door, a secret yeah, formula yeah, or yeah something. they do. And like, you know, because I'm not thinking about that when I'm writing. I just, I just write, and I didn't agree with it. But when they explained to me why that this would be an easy song to open the door with, and then we can go with some more, a little bit more risky stuff after everyone knows who sleep Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like they always come out with a safe track that maybe or might not be that, that number one yeah. track. and then maybe the second one. But they want one. people yeah. to get familiar with exactly. you, so That's they kind of tiptoe you out the yeah. door, yeah. So I feel like 
I I couldn't, you know, with the people that are going to be actually putting the money into it when there isn't very much money to be made in rock. Yeah. <laughs> or, well, that's you know, not true. I mean, there, there... Well, there is, but right now for us, it's really yeah. weird. Things are, like, we haven't made a dollar yet in Sleepwave over the last year and a half, and they're spending the money, and they believe this is the song. It's a song that I wrote, so I'm like, well, you know, that's okay, cool, yeah. that's yeah. fine with me, I you know. I think it's funny, Just a lot of people don't understand, like, oh, their song's on the radio, they probably make a ton of money, no. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No I mean, way. nothing more got a number one single, and guess what? They're still not making money. Yeah. But, uh, but, I mean, it's bands like you guys that are out there, and, um, you know, it's it's refreshing to have a band like you, and a band like Nothing More that comes out with different sounds and has heart in an album as opposed to just fucking corporate America, you yeah. know, just, just dumping records yeah, out just to I, dump them out. Yeah, I think that's the reason, half the reason why Sleepwave started was because we wanted, I wanted to make something that I wasn't hearing, and I wanted to be, um, it, the way I, I don't view myself as the best writer or the best anything, but I know I'm, I'm, I'm very good at being uh, honest in my, my lyrics, so there's always stuff that I've gone through, mm-hmm. so there's, it's not a lie, it's not fake, I'm not trying to like write a song to be popular or write the right word that's like, ooh, that's a good hook. It's like, I write things that I've been through that suck normally, and people relate to that. Like, where's the modern days Kurt Cobain's, the modern yeah. day Wayne Staley's, the modern yeah. day Trent Reznor's even, like, yeah. the modern day Mainers, like, all these people that wrote music when I was a kid that I latched onto because, you know, like, my parents were going through a divorce, or I got beat up at school, or whatever it is that you're going through at the time, like your girlfriend left you and that was your first girlfriend all those different things like all this crap that all these people are singing about now like I'm like I mean where's the where's the heart in it there's it's not honest it's some other guy wrote your lyrics and you maybe wrote half the music and Mm then the label changed all that and the producer changed all that and then you got this empty product as a radio programmer program director of an active rock station it's very frustrating for me to see what I have to work with you yeah. know what I mean? Like a number one single that just came out a couple weeks ago, and it will remain, or, or, or remain nameless. When you and it's a very popular band, and they went number one because of their name. But if you listen to the lyrics of the song, you're like, yeah. Are you kidding me? Exactly. This song is number one, but whatever. <laughs> we won't talk about that because I don't want to point any bridges here. But yeah. anyway, thank you for taking the time to come Absolutely. on and talk to us. So the album September 16th. September 16th. Broken Compass. We're Broken looking Compass. forward to it. Absolutely. Through the looking glasses out now. And actually, today, it hasn't been pushed yet because the video is two or three days behind, but The Wolf came out today. If you pre-ordered the record, so there's another song out there. If you're oh, listening very to cool. It. You have to dig a little bit right now. In the next two or three days, there'll be a music video for it, and they'll be pushed, plastered in everywhere. But do you have a music video out now? The, the, looking glass, yeah. the one I saw was only like promoting the album. Yeah, coming we, out. we we put the video out. We were in, we were a week behind or two weeks behind with that one because we actually shot a video. It was awful. We spent all <laughs> our money. Oh, we, no. we cut it. And we shot this video ourselves, actually. And you loved it, probably, and, right? And uh, the label loved it. The management loved it. It's out, it's out, it's out there on the, on the old YouTube. Oh, well, I'll have to look it yeah. up. I have not seen it yet. All right, well, we're looking forward to the album. Looking forward to the show tonight. Oh, yeah. So, guys, Spence Chamberlain of Sleepwave, go out and get the album September 16th. Thank you.